Hi, Sandra here from Create in Spain. I hope you're having a good day and thanks for joining me. Today I wanted to ask you something. Do you ever lack inspiration? Do you find your mojo has got up and left the building? Now you may find it hard to believe, but even I get problems of that sort occasionally. Not too often. Most of my problems are from not being able to shut my brain down from having ideas. But occasionally it just hits you out of the blue. You want to do something and you have absolutely no idea of what you want to do. Keep watching because I have some answers. Right, I have a list by my side, a crib sheet, because I'd forget half of these if I didn't. Got memory like a sip. My first one is use something different that you don't normally use. So this card, I decided to use some laminate pouch, put some glittery bits in between it and use that as a base for my card. So I actually built the card around this laminated pouch. It was put through the laminator so it goes nice and clear but it holds all your sparkly bits. Nothing's going to drop off. That's something you need to consider if you're doing a card with a complete acetate front because if it's flexed, sometimes you'll find that if you stuck something on it, it will come off. But I felt that I wanted to do something a little different and this is what I came up with. I finished it off with a scrap circle that I had in my stash, coloured it up a little bit, put a little cutout or two on and then put my sentiment on and just put some white dots on. It was just something a little different. This is not the sort of card that I generally have done. Now, another technique can be finding one image and using it as a repeat pattern. Not necessarily all the same type of repeat pattern, but a repeat. Now here I have a card that I rather like, which I made on my silver bullet. And what I did was I took this image of a box and I repeated it and I put it on my machine and I actually embossed with a blunt tool, I embossed the shape. And then I added some color with some brushes and I just did a little circle of color in each one just to make them different colors. And I added an outside line in a matching tone and then I put on some sparkly bits and I put my sentiment on. So I think this card actually looks quite nice. But using the same design, I've also done this one, which looks quite different. Even though I've got the same background colour on, this looks different. With this one, what I did was I cut out an offset in black, gold, black and gold cut this from actual sparkly glitter card so then placed it on the top and I've got a different look altogether from this one but it is the same image. Now while on the subject of images this image actually came from a font. Whatever you do, if you are stuck for an idea, have a look through your existing fonts, see if you've got picture fonts. If you do not have any picture fonts, you are wasting a big resource, you really are. Go onto somewhere like dafont.com and you can find a whole load of perfectly free fonts and there are quite a lot of picture fonts to go through. Plug in something that interests you, like animals or, I don't know, star signs or something, and see what comes up. Good way of getting some added inspiration. Now, the other thing that I have done on these particular cards is changed up my card base. In this particular case, I've changed the colour. I normally do a white card base, but this being Christmas card, I decided to go for red and it makes it look considerably different to my usual cards. So you can change it up by the shape, by the way that it is, whether it's landscape, whether it is portrait. You can 
change it up by size, the format, whether you go for a pop-up card or whether you go for a flat card, a step card, and lots of other different things. So you can change it up quite easily and it doesn't take an awful lot of effort to do. Using wrapping paper and foils. For example, this one I have used a cheap foil to cut out my tree shapes. The effect is pretty spectacular, it's a really pretty looking card. Did it take me ages to do? No. But it's a great way of changing things up, add a little bit of sparkle. You can add sparkly pens, sparkly gems, sparkly papers, you can add glitter. Yeah, all those things will change up your design and maybe give you a little bit of oomph. Monochrome cards are great. Black and white cards, grey and white cards, things like that that you don't normally do can be a great way to change things up and just give you a little bit of a push. Something different, something a bit of a challenge to actually do. Cleaning your craft room because if you're anything like me, and I do keep my craft room pretty clean and tidy, but if you're anything like me, you have a reasonable amount of things in your craft room, and sometimes you forget what you've got. So if you reorganize, give things a clean out, reorganize, clean out some of the stuff maybe that you haven't used for years, you'll either find something that you haven't used and don't want to use, so you can either pass it on to someone else, or you can throw it out, or you'll suddenly find something Oh, heavens, I haven't used that for years. I can't wait to use that. Oh, it'd be so much fun. And there your inspiration will strike. So always a great idea to clean out a craft room. On the same sort of thought, if you have any crafting friends, try and persuade them to do the same thing and then swap what you don't want. Because what you don't want will probably be new to someone else and what they've got you might like to use. So swap it out, either permanently or just arrange a swap on a temporary basis and have a bit of fun with some new supplies without having to buy any. Now the next thing I'm going to suggest is actually almost pretty obvious, but maybe not as obvious as you might think. Google me. Now the reason I say that is because I have at my latest count, over 700 videos on my channel. And when you're looking at my channel, the chances are you're either going to look at a specific playlist, or you're going to be looking at a specific video, you're going to be looking at a new video that's out, and you're going to miss an awful lot of my older videos, which are well worth watching, but which won't come up in your suggestions. The way that YouTube works is that the most popular videos get suggested and the ones that aren't watched much don't get suggested, which is rather a self-fulfilling prophecy. If it isn't popular, it doesn't get suggested. If it doesn't get suggested, it doesn't get viewed and it's then not popular. So whereas I have somewhere in the region of 6,000 or so subscribers now, I spent several years where I had very, very few subscribers and consequently some of those older videos are not going to come up in anyone's suggestions. So what I suggest is you type in create in Spain and then something that you want to look at, be it box cards, maybe it's LED cards, maybe it's actual boxes, maybe it's stamp making, maybe, I don't know, it could be anything, Christmas cards, birthday cards, anniversary cards. Put in Creating Spain and then what you want to find, what you're interested in looking at. And you'll probably find videos that you didn't realise existed, even if you have watched my channel for quite a while. So it's a good idea to have a check. You can give yourself a really big, big present this Christmas and it's not going to cost you a penny. Absolutely nothing. Does that have your interest peaked? Okay. Learn your software. If you have software for a cutting machine, 
learn it. Set aside 10 minutes a day to watch videos on how to use it. Or actually read the manual. <laughs> now that's an unusual one, isn't it? Watch my videos if you want on Shortcuts A Lot or even Silhouette Studio. I've got some on Silhouette Studio, my older videos. Um, watch anyone's videos basically on the software or just play with the software consistently for 10 minutes a day and learn it because I can assure you there are things that your software will be able to do that you haven't realized you'll be able to use things so much better if you practice and the more you practice the easier it will get your confidence will grow and you'll be able to do more designing of your own things and thoroughly enjoy yourself and that is what this game is all about it's supposed to be enjoyable use one image that you have colored in and then insert it into another background I used this image of a hedgehog and if I just put it on the card as is it just didn't look right so what I did was I cut it out because it was only on a scrap of paper in the first place and then I cut out my background with the same shape and then applied it inside and it makes it work. Tie it up with a sentiment in a similar colour, so I've gone for the red in this case, and use a similar colour background and it'll come out really nicely. So that's it, hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you again soon. Take care now, bye bye.